Welcome everyone! In today's video, I would like to discuss a certain, now mostly single-player PvE event from the Battle for Azeroth expansion, and that is the Island Expeditions. I simply want to answer two questions. Is it still worth farming in 2024? And is it a viable gold farm? Before we start, let me explain what Island Expeditions are. During the Battle for Azeroth expansion, Blizzard added a scenario-like content which people usually ran to farm Azerite. It is not important for us to know what Azerite is, but in short, it was basically a type of currency you used to upgrade your neck, Heart of Azeroth and your Azerite gear. Nowadays, people run the islands for mounts, pets, toys, but most importantly, transmogs. There are plenty of transmogs which are unique to the island expeditions. And the best part is that you can sell every single transmog you get, meaning that you could run islands to farm gold. The mounts and toys are buying on pickup, but you can also sell the pets. And with the new warband system, you can now unlock all appearances on any class you want. So now that we know what we want, how do we get the most desirable transmogs? Well, there are two ways of obtaining rewards. First is just by playing the island expeditions and getting a reward at the end of the run. At the end of every run, you will also get some satchels, which contain a currency called Seafarer's Doubloon. This is where the second option of obtaining the rewards comes in. You can use the currency to buy... Loot boxes! Yep, before you start farming the island expeditions, I highly advise you to purchase this upgrade from your ship's upgrade person. If it's not available for you, you need to complete the settlement quests from the ship, which are quick and easy. You can get the quests from Hellford Wormbane for the Alliance and Nathanos Blightcolor for the Horde. There are three types of these boxes you can buy, each type having a different cost and different item drops. There are two green quality boxes you can buy, the Venture Co. Salvage, worth 50 doubloons, which can contain some hidden gems like the Dragon Rider's Harness, and the Elemental Salvage, worth 75 doubloons, which can contain hidden gems like the Firekin Amis or the Whirling Devish Turban. When it comes to the blue quality boxes, there are four. The Molten Clay Salvage, the Ungol Ruins Salvage, the Verdant Wilds Salvage and the Whispering Reef Salvage, all costing 120 doubloons. From these, you can start obtaining mounts, depending on which crate you open. There are 9 different mounts you can get from the Island Expedition boxes. Some mounts drop only from one box, while others can drop from multiple. The mounts that can drop from multiple boxes are the Blood Gorge Hunter, Surf Jelly, Stonehide Elderhorn, Craghorn Chasm Leaper, Twilight Avenger, Squawks, and Risen Mare, Kinshaw's Eternal Hound and Island Thunderskill can only drop from one chest, which we will discuss in a moment. And the last purple quality boxes are the Dread Chain Salvage, Crestfall Salvage, Haven'swood Salvage, Urendal Salvage, Rotting Mire Salvage, Skittering Hollow Salvage, and Snow Blossom Salvage. These cost 175 doubloons each and have the highest item drop pool. You can expect loot based on what is written in the description of the chest. For example, the Haven'swood chest's description is as follows. Salvaged goods from the Gilnean island inhabited by Feral Worgen, Old God Minions and Dark Necromancers. For the Feral Worgen, there is the Duskhaven Transmog set for cloth. For the Old God Minions, there is the Faceless Follower set for cloth. And for the Necromancers, there is the Dark Animator set for cloth. As well as some pets and mounts themed to these types of enemies. And when it comes to the Island Thunderscale and Kinshaw's Eternal Hound, they drop from Yorondal Salvage and Snow Blossom Salvage, respectively. I should also not forget about the island expeditions themselves. You see, depending on which enemies you kill on the island, the loot connected to the mob type will drop. So for example, here. I played on the Rotting Mire Island. I have encountered mostly pirates, but also some draconids, elementals, venture co, and necromancers, so I was eligible to earn loot from any of these mob types, even mounts. 
You might be asking, how long does one island run take? Well, I have put this to the test. I ran island expeditions for one hour, which resulted in 8 runs. This means that one run would take you around 7 minutes and 30 seconds, but you might do it faster if you have a druid, for example. From all of these runs, I have gathered 166 doubloons, 4 transmog pieces, one of which was a gold mine, and two pets. Since I had a few doubloons from before, I could afford to buy a Haven's Wood Salvage. Why did I buy this one? Because you can get the Duskhaven Top Hat Cloth Transmog, which goes for a lot on the auction house, but as you can see, I didn't get it. Unlucky. When it comes to the gold I made, let's say that each transmog will sell for their current price. So based on the prices of the items on that day, I just made 183,939 gold in one hour, which is pretty good. However, I should mention that I got super lucky and that the usual amount of gold you'd get would be a, probably around 40,000 gold, unless you're really unlucky. So to answer the first question, is it worth farming island expeditions? Definitely. It's super fast, it's chill, if you don't have the mounts, you have something to work towards besides gold farming, and if you get lucky, you will get a lot of gold. To answer the second question, is it a viable gold farm? Well, yes and no. I do not advise you to buy the purple quality chests if you are doing this for the gold farm. If you want gold, I advise you to buy the elemental salvage and the venture co salvage, since they are the cheapest and contain one of the most valuable transmogs. For example, the Elemental Salvage has the Firekin Emis, the Whirling Dervish Turban and the Plundered Waterbearer Staff. The Venture Co Salvage contains the Dragon Rider's Harness, Plundered Scalebane Claymore and the Plundered Obsidian Scale Smasher. These were just examples of items that sell for at least 15,000 gold but could sell for a lot more while being from the cheapest chest and also depending on the realm. If you are after the mounts, well, you are most likely to spend your doubloons on the purple chests. And well, that's it for the video. Quite a longer one, but I wanted to explain everything regarding island expeditions. Have you ever farmed these? Did you make a lot of gold? Do you have all the mounts from the islands? Let me know in the comments. Like the video if you liked it, and make sure to mortal strike the subscribe button as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later!